never finished. Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemically Bonded, Kyoku's Route, so let's go ahead and continue. Kyoko, tossing her pencil aside, finishes jotting down the results from our experiment. There's no anomalous data either. We did really good. Go... us? Yeah, go us. From my discussion with Naomi, seeing her like this truly puts the meaning of their happiness into perspective. Undoubtedly, Kyoko is hurt over the bond she once held with Naomi. It'd be hard to call her sad in this situation. For me to be so ingrained into the lives of these two girls in only mere five days, it feels weird. But anything else will feel weirder. It's just something I'll have to accept. Being here though is something I truly do desire. There's a lot more behind the covers that needs to be addressed before we can move forward. The two of them, trapped by their own memories of one another. My place in this, despite unclear, will soon be revealed as the two of them begin to open their hearts as soon as I can heal their bonds. As I watch Kyoku tidy up the equipment, all I can do is smile. If there's one thing I can say, is that I truly am glad I've gotten to know her. Need any help? It's okay. You don't need to do anything. Really. Just being a member makes me happy. Hearing that from her, a girl I'd once assumed to be reserved and shy, it's truly a sign of how fast things can change, how we appreciate one another. I couldn't ask for anything else. Passing my eyes in the flash, the buildings in the distance move one by one through my vision as I watch them and stay close to tranquility. The train, rocking slowly from side to side, screeching as it closes in on another stop. Sparing myself the long walk home isn't a bad treat from time to time, and after a busy week, the room for thought is a bonus too. Here I am, mulling over the relationship of two girls I've really only just met. All I can do is bask in the glistening sunlight hitting me through the windows of this small metal box and reflect on the challenges now before me. Despite these challenges, putting myself out for them is ultimately the choice I chose to make. Being private to their sadness was enough to rope me in enough to call out to my heart. Bearing witness to Kyoko's inner sadness, her scarred history, not wanting to be there for her would ultimately go wrong. From joining the science club, the cheerful smile I've gotten to know is one I want to protect, even if it's from herself. Fixing her past with Naomi, to get them to understand one another, it's not going to be easy. Still, for Kyoko, being able to bring her happiness should be enough in return for what she's given me. Sincerity. That, and a friend. After only a couple of days, it's weird enough to say she means a lot to me, but I don't see it any differently. Continuing on its journey, 
carriage rocks once more as commuters finish boarding the doors close tightly behind them. Standing up, I move towards the doors ready to get off at the next stop. It's pedantic, but being able to leave before everyone else is a routine I've ingrained within my mind. A mind currently preoccupied with thoughts of schoolgirls bearing thigh highs and sports shorts. Spending time with them has really gotten to me. Fan service aside, the path to healing their bonds is shrouded by their hardship and confusion and lack of knowledge. To get them closer to one another, perhaps it's up to me to get closer to them. Without fully knowing what happened, or anything about them, being able to make them friends again is a task beyond my capabilities. But, I'm willing to give it a try. It all starts with opening up to one another. I'm going to have to talk to them. Slowing once more with a loud screech, the train pulls in at my stop with the usual glimpses of people idling at the platform. Something to say they were not the only ones with thoughts or problems. We all have lives to be getting on with. Arriving through the doors to my room, the evening light greets me. I just start my routine in the usual style of tossing my backpack onto the bed. It could be considered boring, but recent events have given me enough to focus on besides wasting my time away online playing visual novels. Dust floats around the room. Sparking at the tip of sunlight. A sign that really lounging around in my room isn't eventful. Having made manifested ties between Naomi and Kyoko, they connect the past. All that needs to be done is to follow through on my promise. Please, I want you to help me. I'd rather just stick to this bun. Thanks. These are mine. I want you to help with Kyoko. Looking back in the day's events, the emotion flowing from Naomi's eyes was enough to sell her sincerity. A lonely girl. Someone out of place. Maybe I'd misjudged her. Coming to me for help, it really goes to show how much she cares about Kyoko. To learn about their past means being a part of their future. Whether they like it or not, I'm going to have to truly get to know them. As much as Naomi wants me to convince Kyoko to befriend her again, getting her to accept her own mistakes is another part of the challenge. Spending time with them is really the only way to do it. It's not like I can complain though. Hang around with cute girls is every guy's dream. Being a member of the science club helps, and it's not as if Name is going to be too hostile if she actually wants me to cooperate. Now it's probably the best time to get in touch with one of them. I can't imagine the choices right before my eyes. Kyoko or Naomi. Maybe I do spend too much time playing visual novels. I should probably call Kyoko. Sliding my hand down to my pocket, my fingers clutch tightly at my phone in lieu of the usual symptoms of nervousness. It's not like there's anything to worry about. Despite not knowing Kyoko for long, it's hard to say I'm not on good enough terms to call her. Dividing her out though? That of course is something different. A strong heartbeat piercing through my chest is enough to make that apparent. 
All I can do is embrace the chance of my own breath against the required daily life and motion beyond the glass pane before me. An indecipherable melody. If it'll make her happy, if it'll make them happy, I have to do this. Well, with tomorrow being Saturday, it wouldn't be odd for two friends to young and hang out together. I might not be as smart as Kyoko, but for me, overthinking things isn't much of an issue. Focusing on the screen before me, my eyes stay glued on the call button. Now is the time to do this. If I don't call her, all I'd be doing is wasting my time procrastinating. Whatever she's up to, I'm sure she'd be happy to talk to me. Lifting my finger away from the screen, ringing my to my ears as my phone lightly touches the tip of my ear, brushing hair aside. The resonance of my own breathing is soon to be greeted in sync with the light puffs from Kyoko on the other end of the line. And that was a cute sound, but it's not as if it's the only thing strange about her. Strange enough to keep me captivated. Naomi still retains strong feelings towards Kyoko. All I have to do is find out what she thinks in return. Hard to do. Knowing she's probably sitting there with an adorable grin waiting for me to speak up. Hello! Kiko opens it with her typical enthusiastic demeanor. They think my guess from before wasn't too far off. Hey, Kiko. As far as awkward greetings go, I could at least do worse than that. Have you finally decided what your favorite element is? Uh, clay. But really, that's not important. What? Maybe calling sounds unimportant wasn't a great idea, in hindsight. Clay isn't an element. It's a mineral. You uninformed individual. Unlike Naomi, Kika doesn't seem to want to go as far as calling me an idiot. Coming from her, though, it wouldn't be an inappropriate thing to say. She's on another level. Well, you'll have to give me a few lessons next time. From what I recall, I like they do in classes teach us kid stuff. But they do! Granted, Tura really could be called kid stuff. Him top prefectural tests numerous times. I'd be surprised if she actually learned anything by school to school. In a way, I feel sorry for her. I really must be boring. But Nia, yeah, maybe that's why she formed the science club. All I can do is feel slightly better knowing that I'm part of her idea of fun. Kyoko's breathing makes her way through the line, her sounds resting against my ear. She sounds... Nervous. Anyway, what are you doing tomorrow? Me? Th this isn't a group call, you know. Shockingly enough, the same question has been on both our minds. Her voice, still timid, contrasting what I've known as her usual self. At times like these, maybe I am learning more about the true Kyoko. Having met her in the science club, it's not too far off to suggest that she has in fact been lonely. Ever since she left Naomi. I'm not up to anything. That's great! It really is. <laughs> That's great. Aside from re shift in enthusiasm, it's not as if there is a difference. Why is that? Are you planning on roping me into some sort of experience you can't do at school? N no, it's not that. But that's a nice idea. They don't let me bring in the stuff with the red labels on.
Yeah, it'd be bad if they had your personal safety at heart. It's fine. I'm an adult. At least in England. But this isn't England, let alone Wales. From what I've heard, there's a fancy school in Tokyo that teaches their curriculum. Anyway, you're free to go to the city tomorrow, right? I'm supposed to meet someone. I'm free. But it sounds like something you do on your own. Who are you supposed to be meeting? A friend, at least. I've spoken to her online a bit. She wants to join the club. We can go shopping for supplies for the club, too. Passion seeps from her words as they graciously resonate out of the device placed suddenly against my ear. Almost as if she's here now, raising her hands up enthusiastically as she radiates a whimsical sense of cheerfulness. I don't talk about Amy to know that she can't always be this happy. In fact, she really isn't. A friend? I'm guessing she's in one of the classes. And you haven't met her in person yet? <laughs> About that. It's not important. What's important is that you're coming, right? The she really did have another friend in school. I think I would know about it. More so in the enemy, too. Trying to hide it is suspicious enough, but really, I couldn't care all that much. Rather, I'm glad she hadn't been without one after the incident with the track team. Knowing she wasn't alone, it's leading. Alright, I'll go. Where do you want to meet? There's a cafe next to the station. You can't miss it. It's really popular. Anyway, I have to go. Just be sure to be there. She must have to leave for dinner. That's usually the reason, anyway. Be sure to attend the club on Monday, too, right? That's right. Her characteristic, elevated voice seeps out from beside my ear. The cool glass of the phone screen slightly brushing against the fine strands of her hair on the side of my head. Sad I can't say I wouldn't be happy to listen to. It just goes to show how quick we've become friends. I'll see you tomorrow then, Kyoko. I'll see you tomorrow too. The line falls silent. All without the traditional pair of goodbyes. It's not like we need them. The two of us having grown a somewhat abnormal but cherishable friendship. Funny. There's someone I only really get annoyed at the start of this week. Knowing that, it makes the situation upon me an even harder challenge. To fix the broken bonds between two girls without really having a grasp of who they are themselves. Choosing to spend time with the two of them really can't be that bad of an idea after all. Reaching out towards my desk, Phone still in hand, small vibrations chime out from within my hands. And that startled me. Turning the screen towards me, the display catches the evening sunlight, glaring my midst of the dusty air. Looking towards it, once before my eyes isn't much of a surprise. As much intellect as she has, she still leaves out one of the most important parts. Regardless, she wouldn't be such an interesting person if she was that perfect. In a way, her little quirks and features are what truly makes her cute. Peering up from my phone screen, the morning sun blinds my now lifted eyes as they're caught in the midst of its light. The weather couldn't be more apt for the situation. 
It's ideal to have a nice day in what will most likely be a nice day. Having agreed to meet Kyoko in town, it's a newfound contrast to my typical schedule for the weekend. If it wasn't for this, I'd probably be asleep right now. Getting invited to spend a day with a girl that I'm only just getting to know is quite a typical experience. You wouldn't expect it to happen inside of romance novels, that is. Still, there's an issue on both our minds that I want to dress. For her, mine, and Naomi's sake. Letting them harbor those feelings isn't what I want to allow myself to do. Passing down the busy, urban streets, my eyes dart around looking to spot our agreed rendezvous point. As the urban environment continues to change and adapt, it might be rather difficult to locate where this cafe really is. If it's right next to the train station, hopefully I'll find it soon enough. What of what might actually happen, spending time with Kyoko all amounts of progress, building up friendship, allowing us to reach the answers we desire in the future. It'll be easier for her to talk about an issue as deep as a relationship with Naomi. Alongside that, I'll finally find out who exactly this so-called friend Kyoko is supposedly going to be meeting is. Honestly, I feel kind of guilty that the fact had surprised me at first, considering Naomi hadn't let up that possibility of Kyoko knowing anyone else. It's still a little jarring. Speaking to people online as opposed to roping classmates just goes to show that the rumors surrounding her have taken a toll on her social life at school. In a way, I feel sorry for her. Shifting my eyes across the metropolitan span of high-rise buildings and the populated, yet pedestrianized expanse, I catch a glimpse of the very cafe Kyoko was probably not about. Considering it's only one so close to the station for her to claim you can't miss it, it'd be safe to say that this is the right one. Selling itself on its modern aesthetic, Hands of Glass catches the sun against the archaic concrete landscape around it. Nevertheless, it does seem like a rather tranquil place for coffee, in this distance at least. Moving my way through the bustling crowds of the city center, I watch people live out their Saturday morning. The sense of civilization brush against the eardrums of each individual within its grasp. Having been dealt a lot to think about, the relationship between Kyoko, Naomi, and even myself, finding myself lost in thought is a hard thing to avoid. Walking over to the cafe only heightens those feelings. Despite being a Saturday, outside stands a girl adorned in our uniform, her slick golden hair flowing down gracefully as a set of braids only rocked by a passing breeze. Given her pale complexion and her aloof aura, she doesn't seem to be a local, which only further serves to spark my curiosity. It's not like our school is anything special, even the city itself enough to spark an interest to a foreign family. Maybe she's from Tokyo. Ignore your presence for now, I can continue on with my search for Kyoko. Since the interior of the cafe itself is pretty visible from the outside, it's clear enough that she hasn't arrived yet. Or at least, I'm missing something here. Despite seeming like a shy girl, Kyoko isn't one to make her presence unknown. Not to me, at least. If she was here, I'm sure she'd make that obvious to me the second I stepped within her view. Most likely, she's late. It's not like I can really blame her for that. Perhaps it wouldn't be such a bad idea to talk to this foreign student whose eyes are now eerily pointed in my direction. Relying upon Kyoko's undeserved infamy, it wouldn't be a bad shot for a starting point.
At the end of the day, all it comes down to is the fact that Kyoko isn't here. Her emphatic passion for the way she conveys just about anything is strikingly absent. I wouldn't be surprised if she wandered off into one of the nearby shops scattered around the city center. Given the details of our talk about Naomi, maybe that in itself has rung up a sense of nervousness within her. But I'd approach that topic again. For Kyoko, as far as I've known her, is something that wouldn't be fitting at the first glance. Yet, the distant look she had held in her eyes during the course of that conversation is enough empirical evidence to show that her dwindled friendship with Naomi still affects her. She still cares. Set on this fact, I move on towards a stranger, still peering on towards me with a flustered expression. I'd ignore the fact that she might know me, certainly if she does attend our school. Hey, excuse me. Did you happen to see a girl around here with brown hair and glasses? She's kind of short. I say that because despite Kyoko seeming to be at least average in stature, compared to me and even the girl before me, she's definitely short. Even for a westerner, the frail girl before my eyes is pretty well built. More than just her height to say the least. What? Despite Lee's appearing to be a foreigner, she responds in surprisingly perfect Japanese. D do you mean... Kyoko? Responding timidly with a question of her own, it's no surprise that she knows who she is. Granted, it would be even less surprising to hear more about all the other Kyokos, Kyoko, or Kyokos, enrolled alongside us. The fact is there was the only one I'm supposed to be meeting here at this time. You know her? Uh, great. Uh, have you seen her around? She's supposed to be meeting me here. Surprise! It's me! You know you're not supposed to say that when covering someone's eyes, right? I know. But I change things up a little. Science is all about variables, after all. I don't think that science applies much to our scenario, but I'm willing to go along with it. Well, you sure surprised me. That was the point. <laughs> the braided girl looks upon us with a cute but still somehow strange laugh, given the situation. I still don't know who she really is. But I can only guess that this is the girl Kyoko has been speaking with online. So, this is him. She's been talking about me? Why wouldn't I? You're a member of the club. Maybe because I'm the only member too. Barring yourself, of course. And what about... Same here. I haven't seen you around though. What class are you in? For someone Kyoko has only spoken to online, it's hard to think that the two have never spoken in school. Even if she isn't one to go out of her way to speak to people, when she does, her, she sure is energetic about it. Science about asking questions. K Kyoko, you should. Nonsense! Wait, I guess you're right. Anyway, Carrie, just ignore him for now. You're j joining the club, right? Kyoko's voice continues to fill with a distinct sense of nervousness alongside her companion. 
who continues to peer towards me with embarrassment stretching from one cheek to another in the form of a rosy red blush. Considering this is apparently Kyoka's first meeting in person with Carrie, she continues to act at unwavering nonchalance. At least, she isn't trying to dodge my inquisitions. I'm... She... doesn't go to our school, does she? Here, as in the middle of the city? Not, you know, at the club room where we would be if she was really joining the club? Why are you going as far as recruiting members who don't even enroll with us? But, but she said she'd join. Her prior expression continued with a hanging anxiety despite staring from the usual upbeat self is now shifted into what is either a genuine or mock out. At this point, I can't really tell. Nobody has really shown much interest in the club. Even I can't say I was too interested at first. Yet, here I am. You didn't want to join. Kyoko's eyes shift between Carrie's and mine, filled with an increasing look of woe. It's clear that she's at least a little upset, no matter how much she exaggerates it. Keiko, with, with her intellect, merely has a reasonable sense of judgment, somewhere within her at least. She, as with anyone, would know that getting someone outside of school to join the club would be impossible. Standing here, I can't help but gaze upon the conversation before me. Both girls embraced by the looming midday sun, trying their hardest to resolve what really was a non-issue from the beginning. Th that's not what I... Uh, Carrie, right? Um, what exactly did you tell her? Hearing away from Kyoko's sense of pouting, Carrie shifts her attention towards me with an ollie fitting blush, despite only being introduced moments ago. The shade of crimson resting upon her cheeks, I can't help but be reminded of the differences between her and Kyoko's personality. Such a difference really puts into perspective how contrasting Naomi and Kyoko are too. If the one of the real friendship still existed, it's something I'd like to know. I said I'd love to if I went to your school. But you don't. She made you wear that, right? Hey! You're saying that as if it's a bad thing. Frankly, I think it looks good on her. What about the lab coat? That's a great idea! We'll have to get her one. Albeit fun, playing along with Kyoko's jokes is far from fair and the perturbed girl is standing between us. Please, I... I can't continue to idle on as the sheepish girl before me was ever destroyed Kyoko's usual self. That and well, we'd be here all day otherwise. Kyoko, it's not a really nice thing to force someone to wear something they don't want to. But, but... The crowd continues to deepen further. I can't help but feel that this is our idea of fun outside of the lab, experimenting on our friends instead. Okay, I'm sorry. That's what you wanted, right? Good enough. I'm proud of you. As half-assed her apology was, dwelling in the situation will only serve to tire me out. And the two girls before me, their hair blowing in the warm spring breeze out of the urban landscape, what I want to do now is continue on with what we are supposed to be doing. Coffee with two cute girls to show for it. Now let's go inside, right? 
lifting her arms up, the emotion filled excitement. Kyoko leads us on as we make our way inside. Two new friends and the stranger. Pausing my feet inches away from the door, a light tug strikes against my sleeve, all to be accompanied by a faint blush present on the girl's cheeks. Thank you. Kyoko sure knows how to pick her friends. Hitting the panes beside me, the looming afternoon sun seeps in through the glass, leaving the three of us converged around this small coffee table. Time, of course, had passed on. Kyoko and Carrie sitting together, chatting. Can't help but feel that somehow, a similar scenario would have occurred with Naomi and Carrie's shoes. If she were here, I wonder what she'd think. Naomi, a girl seemingly driven on conviction, yet still so sensitive inside. Brushing her bangs aside, Kiko parts a silky strands of her hair, lifting up her cup to take another neg negligible sip of her latte. She ran to the button that was so as she presented me before, watching her drink away as her small lips press against the white ceramic, who makes her look sophisticated. I suppose the usual childishness I've become used to expecting. It's getting late. Besides, I'm glad that she's not totally alone. Hi, we're supposed to go shopping today. Surprise or even shock, coats Kyoko's face as she looks onwards towards me, breaking me away from her trance. I need to go too. I'm supposed to be having dinner with someone. Really? You're not coming with us. But we're like the triple bond in nitrogen. I can't really say I agree. Carrie doesn't seem like a bad person, but I can't say I had much of a place in their conversations. I'm sorry, Kyoko. I have to go. Promise you'll come again. Kyoko? It was... Nice meeting you like this. I'll see you again soon, right? That's right. I'll... See you again too. Leaving Kyoko with a faint smile, the braided girl turns a strikingly beautiful face towards me with a look of uneasy embarrassment. Seeing her this close, I can agree with Kyoko that I'd like to see her again too. Bye. See you. But given her weariness towards me, I can't really tell if she feels the same. Now along with Kyoko, the two of us continue taking brief sips of our drinks. Breeze by silence. The first time I'm actually alone in the city with a girl. Now, if any, it would be a good time to make conversation. I want you to change her opinion of me. So she'll talk again. That, in reality, is harder than it seems. Nevertheless, I can't help but try to make them happy with each other. Fidgeting with her hands, Kiko's eyes shyly peek up towards me, anticipating something to break the ice. Do you normally go to town with friends like this? Despite having only met Carrie in person for the first time, the question itself invites deeper discussion into Kyoko's social life one which has been in turmoil ever since she was kicked out of the track team. Naomi, realizing the results of her actions. Huh? Her cheeks are typically reddened, and I'd say to see on Kyoko's now puff cheeks. What do you mean? I... It's... Alright, uh... Never mind. 
forcing you to answer is really just as hard as asking the question itself. I used to go with Naomi, but things didn't really work out. Now I'm a bit sad and eyes. All I can do is trail away from the topic to keep things easy for her. Even if she holds those feelings, the regret inside of her, pushing her towards her past in spite of the future isn't something I like to put pressure on. In time, piece by piece, I'll learn more about the world which once engrossed their lives. I see. Feeling pretty tired. We can leave for shopping another day. I don't want to bore you. I really had fun today. I wouldn't want to ruin it. It's not like she would. So regarding my lack of scientific knowledge, spending time together is just as fun for me as it is for her. Ah, you wouldn't win it. After all, this is a science club, right? Even more so, you're a friend. Th thank you. Anyway, we're going to risk the chain. Come on, let's go. Remarkably, Kiko takes hold of my hand, our skin meeting together with warmth. With nothing but a small tug, Kyoko looks upon me with a rosy blush, before softly dropping her hand to the side of realization. We wouldn't want to have to wait, right? Right. Masked by the expanse of darkness, nothingness, the room around me. Whatever it is, I sit within the silence as I look down at my dimly lit desk. Paper is strewn haphazardly with no care for the contents, and that's a work never to be done. I'm sure it's a sight every student is used to seeing. Surely Kyoko has had a lazy day too, right? No matter how long I mull over the details for, it's still pretty cliche to say that I don't want to do my homework. Yesterday, as eventful as any Saturday has ever been, what would hang out with the girl I just met? It doesn't particularly stand out anymore, given my now settled relationship with Kyoko and Naomi. Calling myself their friend is not far fetched. Especially if I'm going to be the one who fixes the broken bonds laid strewn between them. That too. Another cliche. It's just something I'll have to bear with. It isn't my plan to be their knight in shining armor. But with Kyoko herself blocking out Naomi's calls, and her two diminishing in confidence to confront her, it's no doubt someone beyond their connections had to get involved. Just so happened to be me. A small gust skirts through the room from the window, flapping about the papers before me as I loosely stare at the video beamed back from my laptop screen. A comedy show, topped out with the classic street man and wise guy routine. It's enough of a distraction that it's not keeping me interested. Inevitably, my hand stretches out against the dust-filled air towards the phone on my desk, bringing it back to the warm evening light towards my face. As typical as it is for someone my age, captivated by life in the digital world, I can't help but go further. I want to talk to one of them. Whether that's the energetic brunette scientist I've become so accustomed to, 
by the branch, but somehow cute soon did it. I'd be great to help out. I wouldn't really mind. Getting the chance to speak to any girl like this on the weekend is a thing to value itself. Even in light of yesterday's events. Sad as that may sound, I'm their friend. It's something I want to do. Leaning my neck backwards against the hard wooden chair behind my back. What are many actions as my body now lays sunken down further towards the floor in boredom. Yesterday's events, a little cafe visit, all seems like a far distant dream as the evening light hits my eyes, forcing them to close. I can't deny the fact that Kyoko is pretty cute in the casual get, to get up. It's not like it makes much of a difference to how she normally looks. My mind continues to drift, slowly filling the thoughts of Kyoko. She smiled as she idly chatted away. The sullen eyes she carried as she reminisced the events of her past. These feelings. I didn't know I cared about Kyoko that much. But to know those thoughts exist inside her, thoughts of regret, they can only spur me on more. As for her friend, Carrie, all I can say is that she was pretty cute too. For an average high school lad, I can't say that seeing more of her would be a bad thing, though Kyoko's actions were pretty reckless. <laughs> you really have a lot going on, don't you? What do you mean? You're a lot more talented than me. You're smart and... <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Do you get drunk off of coffee or something? Eh? Why would I? Coffee doesn't contain ethanol. But... It does contain hydroxyl groups. I guess. That was one hell of a day. Regardless, the feelings inside me now all lead me in the same direction. Each one wanting the same thing. I want to learn more about her. Kyoko, reserved and shy girl to any old bystander, smashes each and every cliche to bits as she lives on in a world of eccentricity. One which hides her inner sadness. She used to be the, on the athletics team. She used to be friends with Naomi. Is that past that I want to know? A past she needs to come to terms with. Maybe in a way, Naomi can help with that. With my phone screen still before my face, the cool white glow contrasting against the amber shaded light. Spin through it against the midst of trees beyond my window. Take a step forward to make the call out to her. Having got myself roped into this, the action itself is not trivial as the days had gone on and on. My position, ever clearer, having never even spoken more than a sentence to two of them throughout the, my three years of high school, here I am. Their friend. As if beckoning me, Kyoko's name stands up brightly on the screen before my eyes, urging me on to give it her a call. Whether it's her cute and chirpy horror or her adorable face, I couldn't care. What really matters is that she's my friend. From joining the science club, it's clearer to me than ever that she's in pain. Pained by her past with Naomi. In order to truly crack this puzzle, I need to understand that past. I need her to open up to me. After all, the hesitance she carries is only reflected by herself. The mirage surrounding her judgment. Naomi, spearheading the operation to become friends with her again, only carries her own doubts. For that to really happen, 
I need Kyoko to trust her. To trust me. It's only natural to get her to understand Mimi's position. Especially when she couldn't do it herself. I spent time with her yesterday. It's clear enough that Kyoko still harbors feelings towards Naomi. As faint as that response was, teary eyes and stuttered words, it's like they're not there. All she needs is more time to accept them. I continue to listen to ringtone as the patience builds up inside me in front of height pulse and the mouth sweat. All I can do is hope Kyoko picks up the line. Whether it's a responsibility, the fact that I'm once again calling a girl in what could be described as a rare moment in my life, I'm nervous. The sound soon quickly fades into breathing, short and raspy, somehow full with timidity. Hey Kyoko, are you alright? Yes, I'm fine. Hey! You're supposed to say hey at the start of the greeting, you know? Of course I do. I was just experimenting. That's what scientists do. Anyway, why did you call? Did you get an idea for an experiment? Her voice beams with excitement. I have to the idea of science was one for kinks. Even though it probably is. Disregarding the weird thoughts, Kyoko clearly has a history of cherishing her friends. From her history at Naomi to me, the first and only recruit to the science club. It's not strange to think that she hold that with importance. All the more reason to get close to her. Why would I? Because I thought you were fun. Still, you don't seem too keen on science. I'll have to teach you harder. As if her passion itself had seeped through the line, my cheeks rise and smell as I realize that she hasn't actually taught me, well, anything. Besides, it's not like I'm in the club for the science. Disregarding the fact that she forced me to join her cute, bewitching nature, at this point I'm here because I'm her friend. Even though she was about to burst into tears if I refused, I like her. How about teaching me at the school tomorrow then? Isn't that the point? We're not holding the club during lunch. I get hungry. That's not what I'm suggesting. The lunch with Kyoko wouldn't actually be that bad. I'd enjoy it. You know, as scientists, we have to do field work sometimes, right? Getting out of the lab would probably give me a better chance to segue into the relationship. Otherwise, she'd be distracted. It's not like I don't want her to have fun. But I'd probably be safer away from all the bunts and burners and weird chemicals she'd have up her sleeve. That's a great idea. I've always wanted to try out my portable science kit. Well, I got it for Christmas when I was eight, but it still work, right? I don't think it gets totally would be all that scientifically accurate. And you haven't used it in the past ten years? Why would I when there's a lab at home? Whoever bought her that present, I'm so sorry. Anyway, I guess that's sort of that. We don't have any chemicals to do stuff at school anyway. How about we go buy some too? Sure. Another venture to the city. Doesn't sound like a bad idea. Moreover, I like spending time with her outside of school. I can still question the legality of buying this sort of stuff off the street, but I trust enough not to cause any trouble. It's fine. I do this all the time. It's as easy as buying chocolate. Last time I checked, she had invented a machine which could give her telepathic powers. It's a pill, actually. What? Uh -huh. That's fine. I'll see you tomorrow then, Kyoko. Maybe? It'd be nice to speak with her for a little longer. I'll see you tomorrow, too. What the 
fall of silence, let my phone press against my ear as I once again look onwards out the window towards a vivid spring evening. At the end of the day, speaking with her had really cleared my mind of what I now need to do. A bright and happy voice, all over the cover, asking the worries pierced in her heart. Even if it's hard, I have to bring up her relationship with Naomi. I have to try. Sliding my hand through my hair, all I can do is relax as I sit before my trepid reflection on my computer screen. Looking down, my phone screen remains on my contacts. Goku's face staying out as she looks on with the same carefree smile I'm so used to seeing. I'll send you a picture later so you can add me to yours. Her chocolate eyes glistening slight above her rosy cheeks as her peachy lips beat brightly in my in a smile. Seeing her like this, it's hard to think anyone would have a problem with her. Those rumors, the word they uttered behind her back. Cheater. I don't know what it all means. As cute as she is, it's stranger to know think how important she really has become to me. The phrase still lingering in my mind, I rest my phone upon my desk once again. Laying out only but a small yawn as the amber sky before me quickly grows a deep shade of blue. I guess it's time to get some rest. A long day ahead. A long challenge. I can still remain happy knowing I get to see her once again. Kyoko. Here to join the side.